Uh, so uh, my next topic here with you guys is uh, simply to look at something that you learn already in your CAD course. Anybody still remember model space, paper space, model and layout? Yes. OK, so same as AutoCAD, so AutoCAD has the same concept, which is the model space and uh, layout. Uh, exactly the same we have here in ArcMap. So please look at my cursor. So my cursor right now is circling around the bottom left corner, bottom left corner. So on the bottom left corner, there are two little icons, not really great, so I don't know why the company decided to make them very tiny, very small. But if I switch between them, not switching by just making my mouse hovering above them, please read. So right now it says data view. And here it says layout view. And this is in AutoCAD called the model and then layout. Model and layout. So let me show you right now. I'm going to switch a couple of times back and forth. I want you guys to see what's going on. So I'm going to click on layout view. Please see what happens. And I go back to data view. And I go back to layout view. Now I want everyone to understand that data view uh, is simply equal to model space and layout view, which we are right now in the layout view is equal to layout in AutoCAD. OK, now I'm going to test you right now. So you guys remember what is layout? What does it mean? It means it's a piece of paper and then through our piece of paper. And remember, my piece of paper is here. This is my map, my drawing. This is my drawing. And remember, model space and paper space, they were invented for printing to create printed maps. OK, so uh, the thing is, uh, this is our paper. So this thing here is our paper. And from our paper space, we create a window and we look through the window to the world. OK, anybody still remember what is the name of this box here from AutoCAD? So this in AutoCAD, this has a name. This box here, which you can stretch, you can move around. This has a name. Anybody remember the name of your window from the paper space to the model space? Viewport. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. OK, so you can see this is your viewport and you can see I can stretch it down. I can move it. I can do whatever I like to come up with one specific design. So let's say Tahir is an artist and, uh, you know, is trying to come up with some design for my map. So here is my viewport and you can see here I'm leaving some area for other things which you will know in a minute. OK. I need to, uh, to ask you one question. Since you guys still remember what does it mean viewport and layout and a model space, can I ask you what are the things that you have to change to create a new layout? OK, the question in another language. When you create a new layout in AutoCAD, the software will ask you a couple of questions. Do you guys remember those questions? What do I need to set up to create a new layout? OK, I'm going to give you one uh, tab. Huh? So do we need to decide what is the paper size? Like what is the size of this paper here? Do I need to do that? Yes. OK, so what else? What is the second one? It's only two huh? in order for you to create a new layout. You need the paper size and you need. The scale, OK, you need the paper, paper size and the scale. So I'm going to show you right now how to set up the paper size and how to change the scale to be able to create a new layout. It's not very difficult to be honest, it's very simple. So what you have to do is I'm going to start with the paper size. So in order for you to change the paper size, what you want to do is you want to go here to menu file 
and go down to page and print setup. From menu uh, file, you go to page and print setup. When you click on this one, I bet you, you already have used this dialog box here probably for 1000 time in the last two years. You always print stuff, huh? You always print PDF. And so really the printing is so simple. You need to simply choose your printer. So you can see here uh, on my screen, there are uh, actual printers. Those are in state, which I cannot really print right now. Or I can, I guess I can if I connect myself to the VBN. Uh, however, I cannot grab the, the branded, OK? So I'm not going to do that. So those are a real printer, physical printer. While those ones, including Adobe and then Bluebeam, those are PDF printer. In general, to be honest, I always recommend for my students to use a PDF printer. Even, even their intention is to print an actual paper, I always ask my students, please print PDF first. Then if you like it, so you like the thickness of the of the lines, you like the margin, you like everything, then you can print your PDF file. Now uh, let's go ahead and choose B Blue Beam. For you guys, again, it doesn't matter whether you choose Blue Beam or uh, or any other PDF printers. Doesn't matter. Once you choose the printer, the next one is you choose the paper size. You can see here the paper size varies. It goes start from uh, you know A node and then A1, A2, A3, and so on. So let's say I'm going to go with A3. So I'm printing an A3 uh, map. The last thing you want to do before you hit OK is to choose whether your map is portrait, the orientation is portrait or landscape. And simply you can see what's happening. Huh? If I go to landscape, watch here the preview. And if I go to portrait, it's kind of uh, this way. It really depends on the size of your area, like the area that you're trying to create a map for. So if your area mainly extending north, south, you want to go with portrait. If your area extends east, west, then you want to go landscape. In this exercise here, I'll keep it as portray. Hit OK and see what happens as I hit OK. Things will change a little bit because I have changed my paper size. Originally it was letter, so letter is small, and then A3 is kind of double of that. So what I can do is I can simply click on my viewport, move it here, OK, and then maybe stretch it this way. And then, uh, you know what? That's my design. I'm going to leave some area because I need this area and this area on the top and the bottom because I need to add more stuff. So now you know how to change the paper size. So what's next? How can I change the scale? So if you want to change the scale, watch this. So on the top, uh, just under geoprocessing, there is a scale bar and the scale, uh, the scale drop down menu. It gives you access to come some standard scales start, starting from one to one thousand, ten, one to ten thousand and so on. So you can simply choose, for example, a scale to one to a hundred thousand. I'm asking you, do you think this is a good scale or bad scale? Do you think this is a good scale or bad scale? One to a hundred thousand. Bad. No good bad scale because look at your map area. Your map area is too tiny and you're losing your in the air, the, air, the paper uh, area. So anyway, so that one to hundred thousand is too, too small. Uh, I will try, for example, one to one thousand. I'm asking you, is that good or bad? Sure, but. It's bad because you're sure you're you're only mapping a small area of your area of interest. So what happens here? Uh, I'm going to go to 10,000 and you can see what do you think about one to 10,000. Any help? It looks good. Looks OK, and so I'm going to give you some like something that maybe will drive you crazy. So you can see here it's kind of not centered, so you wish if this is centered, exactly centered. So I'll show you how to do that. Very simple. You go back to your data view. And then uh, you see those uh, uh, tools uh, or, or uh, icons here. So this icon here, uh, which is called the globe, which zooms to the extent of your drawing, you click here. And what happened is as soon as you go back to your uh, layout view, uh, assembly, your, your area is centered in your viewport. OK, so again, you go back to your. Uh, 
your uh, data view. You click on the globe, so it's kind of zoomed to the full extent, and then you switch back to your data view, and then uh, you can see. By the way, so you know uh, the the scale. Uh, it's uh, uh, the, the scale here. Uh, if your scale is one of these scales, great. If not, you can simply type it in. Huh? I can place my cursor. I can write here my scale. Let's say one to five thousand. Obviously, one to one to five thousand is not really a good scale. So I'm going to go back to one to ten thousand. Now the problem is with this technique is that as soon as you go back to your model space and then zoom out or zoom in, what happen is those numbers are changing. If I go back to my uh, paper space, you see what happens. My scale right now is eleven thousand and eighty. So you can see here. You can use this technique only before you print right away. Huh? So you finish everything, you set it and then print right away. Or I will show you another technique which will fix the scale forever. OK, so this technique is changing the scale from this bar here. It is uh, assembly that uh, uh, depends on your zoom level. It will change. So what I'm saying here is that you can make it one to 10,000 and then right away go and print. So you're done because you're not going to change your scale anymore. However, I'm going to show you another technique which will simply fix the scale until you decide to change it again. Watch this, please. I'm going to show you right now on how to change the scale and fix it. Doesn't change. So you want to go to your table of content. Click not on individual, not on individual uh, shape file, rather than uh, click on uh, the top uh, level, which is layers. Then right click then go down to properties now this one has so many tabs okay so many tabs where you can control so many things right now if you want to change the scale you want to be on data frame data frame then when you go to the extent right now it's automatic so it depends on my zoom level if you choose a fixed scale what it does it simply gives you the scale you want once you hit OK, I want to see what happens. Huh? Watch this. You can see my toolbar here for map scale has been deactivated. It means you cannot change it no matter what. OK, if you want to make it again floating like changing again, you want to reverse the process by going to the same place, going to the properties and uh, make sure you are on the data frame and then change back this automatic and hit OK. When you do that, what happened is your uh, your scale bar comes back in and you can change your scale if you wish. As I said, uh, if you want to don't bother with the, the, my last technique, get everything ready, ready, change the scale and then print. If you if you don't want to change the scale, fine. You just go here, go to properties and then change the scale to fix the scale. Hit OK and scale won't change anymore. Now let me ask you a simple question. Do you think I can print right now? Tell me, please. Let's say I brought in my shape files and I have my roads and I have my uh, my got my bark area. Can I print right now or my map is missing some stuff which is very valuable for the map user? Legend. OK, so here we go. So somebody said the legend. Great. Thank you. Anybody? Anyone remembers along the same discussion? Is it only legend or there is a package that has to go onto your map? Scale, North Arrow. OK, yeah, North Arrow, scale, title, date and so on. So all these things you must do it. And I'll show you how simple to do that. And it's way simpler than Civil 3D. Everything comes from the same place. You go from menu insert and you can see all what you need is here. For example, if I want to add title, I can click on title. I can say here Tahir, Tahir's map. So here we go. Here is my title, map title. Hit OK. You can see uh, here is my title. Now, what else do I need? I for sure need the date. So insert text. So you insert text. And uh, what it does, it simply uh, places your text uh, somewhere in the middle of your map, and you can see I'm holding my text. I can move it around. I will move my text somewhere here and so tiny, huh? so tiny. So all you have to do is double click on it. It will open your uh, the properties and I can write here March 2021 and it's very small, so I can go to the size 
and make sure I multiply this, let's say five times the way it is right now. OK, so five times. OK, hit OK. Now we can see we have the date. I can move it when, wherever I like. I need something else. I need a north arrow. I need a north arrow. So click on north arrow and uh, watch this. Oh my God. So you can see here we have so many shapes of north arrow that comes with ArcGIS. I'm going to choose any one for the exercise. Let's say Esri North 14. Uh, once you click on one of the uh, of, of the, the the north uh, the styles, if I wish, I can go to the properties and I can play with all the properties like the color of uh, any property of this north arrow. You can see here my color is black. I can make it red. Right now it's 72. I can make it 100. It means uh, you know uh, more than it was before. I hit OK. I hit OK here. And here we go. Here is my north arrow. Drop it somewhere. I move it to where I like. Super small. I can stretch it. Huh? I can make it bigger according to my design. Now let's make me finish. Huh? So I have a couple of things. I know some of you already said legend. But I want to say something. Legend doesn't help me much here. And I will show you the legend, but not this class. In the next class, I will show you uh, how can we add the legend. But for today, the legend doesn't make any 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 sense for us. OK, so I'm going to go right now with a scale text scale text, which is just a number that you write on your map and you can see there are so many formats. Huh? Like, for example, I can say in absolute sense, I can say one to one hundred or I can say one one centimeter is equal to 10 kilometer. So there are several even style which one we love, which one we do on our maps. I personally will go always with the absolute where it says one to one thousand or one to one hundred or one to one million without any units. OK, and I can drop it here. You can see here is my scale. It goes again somewhere in the middle of your map so tiny. I can stretch it uh, as much as I like. Here is my scale. So the beautiful the beauty here is that those things are dynamic. So for example, if I release my scale one more time, I'll show you why I'm doing this. Huh? So automatic and I release my skill one more time. Please watch this. If I go here and I choose one to one thousand, see what happens. Everything will update. You can see. Uh, yes, that's not the right scale, but you can see my scale number has a change. I will switch back to one to ten thousand. OK, so those are dynamic. Uh, let me ask you some of uh, for whoever remembered my discussion. Do you think this scale is OK or it causes some problems? This discussion is kind of old discussion. It's almost two months ago discussion. Huh? Numerical scale are good or bad? Numerical scale are good or bad? If I write on the map only one to 10,000 and that's it, it's good or bad? I know you this is very, too. very old. Excuse me? You need the scale bar? You need the scale bar because the scale number, it, it suffers from the expansion and contraction of paper maps, and that's why let's do and add our scale bar. So scale bar is here. You can simply click here and again it comes with so many styles of your scale bar. Let's say I want to go with the metric bar four and uh, again you can click on it, hit OK and you can see it came to the middle. I can move it down here and you can see if uh, if I zoom in. Let me fix the scale first, please. So I will fix the scale to fix the scale. Hit OK. And if I zoom in here. You see what happens? Huh? This is my scale bar. OK, now what if I want to play with it? I want to change some of the properties, for example, like color or maybe units. What can I do? Double click. It opens all the properties of uh, this uh, element and you can change color. For example, I can come here for the format. I can make it red or something if I wish to. Uh, so, the, so that's for text. Huh? So and so that's let's let's say keep the text black and then the bar itself. Let's make it red. OK, and if you want to change, for example, the units right now, it reads kilometer. Uh, I can make it uh, mile if I wish, but that's not the standard. I will keep it as kilometer, but you can see I can change to any units I like. OK, any units I like. So I'll keep it kilometer and hit OK. And you can see I have changed the properties of 
my scale. You can always also you can always stretch. Huh? If you wish, you can always stretch your scale. Now, uh, there are some other elements uh, that uh, uh, you, you want. If you, sometimes you need that, sometimes uh, you can go from insert and you can go to a uh, picture. OK, uh, so if you have any, for example, we typically use it. We can take a Google Earth, Google Earth a picture satellite image. We can place it here somewhere on your map. OK. So I think uh, right now the next step is uh, now let's say I'm ready with my map. So let's get ready and try to save your map or print it in a PDF file that you can submit uh, to me. Watch this. So right now I finish my map. I everything is ready. I have a title, a north arrow, a scale, a scale bar, a date. Everything is ready. So you can go from menu file, and then you want to go to export map. Again, I'm I want to create a PDF map uh, for uh, my project. Huh? So go to export map, and then simply you can export your map in several format. If you drop this menu. Those are all images like uh, Jeff or TEF or BNG or JBG or BIPMAP. Those are all of them. They are image format. I will go to PDF and I will give it a name. Let's say I'll call this one here. Uh, MA. Uh, sorry, CE. CE map. OK, and then hit save. So it will simply save or print a PDF for your map. So then you minimize this one. You go to my desktop. I double click here and this will open for me uh, the map. OK. Now the last part before we uh, give you a, a kind of demo on the project is that now I'm asking you if I right now exit my software. If I exit my software right now. Did I save anything like did I alter my shape files? Did I save anything? So what you have to do right now, if you want to keep your work, you need to save your file. So what you can do is you can come here, whether you click on the save or control S or file save, it doesn't matter, but you want to save your file. So please watch this. If I save my file here, can anybody tell me what will be the extension of my file? I'm going to save right now. Any MXD. help? Exactly. So thank you so much. So you're, yes, when you save your file, it comes as MXD file. Let me call it ce.mxd. Now what happened is, uh, which is very important, very important. Now let's say you did some work and then you want to share your work with your class, not classmate, sorry, with your coworker. Don't share your, your work with classmate. OK, so with your coworker. I'm asking you, would you just go to the desktop like so uh, desktop and uh, look at the CE? So here is my file. Uh, so here is my file called CE.MXD. Should I copy this guy here, copy and send it to my coworker? In other language, does this CE encapsulate all your files? Does it contain physically contain the shape files? Look at the size. Uh, it's not really it doesn't contain the shape file. This MXD file, it just has uh, the process. So for example, it will keep all uh, the, the, the styles, all the symbology. It will keep all the map element, but it doesn't physically contain all the shape files. And what does it mean? It means if I send this one to my coworker and then he is going to or she is going to double click on it, you know what happens? It is going to try to call all the shape files. And all the shape files will try to call all their associated files. And if you don't share with your coworker all the shape files and their associated shape files, what happens is it's you have nothing, which means please think about GIS project as only contains a reference, huh? a pointer. I'm not sure if this word is a good word, huh? a reference or a pointer. So all this MXD file it has, it has a pointer to where you have your shape files. Where do you have your shape files? If the shape files are not with the, or sent with the uh, MXD file, it means 
you cannot open this file. OK, this is something very, very important. Now. We're done with our uh, uh, like training for uh, uh, arc map right now, but the left of the class, I'm going to say something, but please, please, please don't get mad. OK, don't get mad. I know that you guys will get mad. Uh, we have uh, our last assignment for the year for the year. I promise you there is no more assignment and I promise you it is going to be super simple assignment and we will try to do it together in kind of sequential huh? like step by step. Now let me show you uh, the uh, the project. So the project is already I already published it and the deadline is where is uh, three weeks from now, three weeks from now. OK, three weeks. Huh? So here is my uh, my civil my ArcGIS and watch this. So this is my GIS project and some of you will get so excited because when you look at how many pages, some of you will say, oh, that is six pages. It means Oh, I'm going to spend, you know, three weeks doing it. Uh, not really. Huh? Why I make it six pages is I wanted to put as much information and guidance for you not to get lost uh, in, in the process. So you will see here there is lots of snapshots uh, to guide you through the process. And uh, the first part of, part of your, uh, your uh, project, which you can do after the class right away and get ready, whenever we cover the next part is simply a data download. You guys know from last class that what makes GIS so connected to surveying is that every GIS system needs a base map. Can I get you guys to agree on that? Can I get you to agree? Please show your hands if you agree that every GIS system needs a base map. Thank you. OK, now since we already confirm and agree that every GIS system needs a biz map and we can simply uh, collect other attributes and attach the attributes to uh, the entities on my biz map. Now, what are my options? My, uh, should I every time I get a GIS project, should I jo just go to a surveying company and let them use their total station or maybe GPS to survey the area for me or there are some other options. I can tell you in most cases, GIS doesn't require this high accurate uh, maps. Doesn't, OK? So you can live with other kind of maps, which some of them, they are already even available for free on the Internet. So your options is not always uh, hire a surveyor that's getting, is going to be very expensive, and this will add to the cost of your GIS project. Most of the cases or most of the time, you should be able to use some uh, lower accuracy uh, maps. Now I'm going to give you a demo on one of these sources of our maps. OK, so in my project here, you can see I said here browse the following website. So uh, problem is when I click on it, uh, our uh, blue beam will simply work as a as Internet Explorer, which I don't like. So I'm going to copy this link here and I will place it really in my browser. And when I copy and paste this uh, link to my browser, what happens? It will take me to. Canadian government uh, website, so this website here is from uh, Natural Resources Canada, which give us access to free GIS data. We don't have to pay a single penny for it, OK? And within the next 20 minutes, I will give you a quick demo on how to uh, uh, download those free data from this website. You can see the website comes with a visual interface. Uh, this is Canada map and I can zoom in. I'm zooming in right now to Alberta. And uh, uh, right now it's uh, Edmonton, so I can go back to the south, so Calgary. I can zoom in. It's not very friendly every time I try to scroll, uh, scroll in. Uh, scroll forward, the assembly screws the it uh, does some some uh, zoom in, but uh, not really nice. OK, so you can see Calgary start to show right now. Calgary will start to show right now. And you can see here our Calgary community. Nose Hill here in the middle. Uh, Glenmore Reservoir is here. OK, now really the use of the website is super simple. I will give you a quick demo on it. 
and it works like a wizard. So you have to do step by step. Like you can see here on the top left, top left, there is one, two, three, and four, and five. Huh? They're kind of five steps. You have to do the steps in order. Huh? So you start from the top and you go all the way until you submit your request to ask for the data. Now, I would simply ignore the first one, which is called the overlay. It tells you what you want to see here. You can see right now, I can see a map. But can I add a satellite image? Yes, you can. Huh? You can see once I change this one from zero, uh, I get the map. If I change this one to uh, uh, Landsat Music, I can get a, a satellite image. But actually, you are not downloading the satellite image, to be honest. What you're doing right now is just a visual aid for you to uh, better select your area. You know what? I honestly will ignore this one here. OK, so I will simply uh, ignore the first step. Next step is select data to be extracted. So we need to tell the website I am interested to find uh, some data here in Calgary. Right now, what you have to do is uh, it will ask you the type of the data so you can extract uh, vector data, which is called the CanVec. Uh, you can also extract elevations like up and down elevation data or you can make automatic extraction data. So for this exercise, I will use CanVec. So this will download for me uh, vector data for road center lines, for maybe for, um, for lakes, for other things, which will come as a vector to me. So click on CanVec. The next part is uh, once you click on CanVec, it will open for you the way you choose your area of interest. The way you choose your area of interest. There are many ways. One is called, for example, current map extent. So if I click on this option here, I want everyone to look at what happens to my map. If I click on this option, you can see the entire uh, uh, entire extent of my map has been selected, which means I'm going to download everything you see on my screen. OK, what else? What could be the other option? Number two, I can use a predefined clipping area. So this website here, it splits uh, every part in Canada into kind of predefined. So you can see uh, I can go here. So this is called uh, Berdis, or maybe I can click on Calgary. So this will give you a predefined, huh? not your choice, but you get a bulk of area which could be maybe more or less than what you want. So to be honest, I typically don't use this option. Number below here, something called custom clipping area. So which means it allows you to draw a rectangle or draw a polygon or maybe enter coordinates for your, your rectangle. You have all these options. I'll, for example, show you this one. Huh? draw a rectangle. It means you can click here and then I can come back uh, and I can draw a rectangle on my screen. It means I want to get this area. OK. However, bottom line is for my assignment, I'll go to my assignment or my uh, my project. I give you here the coordinates of. Uh, the area of interest, OK, so I give you the southwest corner and I give you the northeast corner. And that's what you will need on the website. If you choose this one here, which is called custom clipping area, and you go enter coordinates, you will have to enter the coordinates of the southwest. I will do here 51. I will do here minus 114.125. Uh, I will go to the northeast. I will go here 51.125, and I will go here uh, minus 114. I know some of you are wondering what are those numbers? As I said, those numbers are the coordinates of the southwest corner and the northeast corner of your area of interest. However, some of you are uh, looking at what are those numbers? 51. Those are latitude and longitude. Anybody in my class knows what does it mean? Lat long, lat long, latitude, longitude. Anyway, you know what? A good news for you is if you don't know what do they mean, but I assume that you learn it there somewhere in your high school. But latitude, longitude, those are angles at the center of the earth. And next class, maybe next class or maybe two classes, I will teach you what does it mean that long. 
Okay, it's a, a different way of expressing a location on the on the earth. So all you have to do is once you uh, simply input the coordinates and those numbers are from my project. Okay, so you can see I'm boxing them for you. So what you can do is you must say display on the map so you can see here uh, my rectangle and then you hit OK. Then once you hit OK, you can see the software baked already the coordinates and uh, ready for you. Now you can see here we can download so many features. We can download all everything, including mines, energy, uh, and then transportation network, which is the road, wooded area like forest, elevation features, all of those. However, in my uh, assignment or, la or uh, project, I ask you to, to only download transport network, okay? Something I wanna say, because this is happens every year, every year. When somebody work on this project, what they do is they never pay attention to my snapshot. Watch this. Can anybody tell me what does Tahir want to you to download? Do I want you to download everything? Can I get some help? By looking at my snapshot. Transport network. Exactly. So please follow. And I write it down here. Watch this. I don't know how I can be more clear. I said here, make sure you select options that matches the above snapshot. OK, uh, for example, something like file format, please make sure you choose Esri shape file. Make sure you choose this option here and so on. OK, so match 100% all these options. I'll go to my website and do the same thing. Esri shape file, I will make it net 83. Yes, clip my area and the scale is 1 to 50,000. Now the last step is you need to add your email address. So I'm going to write here Tahir dot Hassan at site.ca. When you say submit, the software will ask you, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And then submit. Right now, the software is really working on your uh, working on your request. And you can see there is a, pro a word processing. It means working. If you say refresh, it still says processing. It will take some time. Sometimes it's uh, only one minute. Sometimes it's five minutes. Really, it depends on. It depends on how much area you're asking. Are you asking for maybe a subdivision or asking for Calgary or asking for Alberta or asking for entire Canada? So the more area you ask, it will take more time. That's number one. Number two is how busy the server. So, for example, if all of you right now are sending requests to the server, it will take more time. Please watch this. I'm going to say refresh. You can see here right away it says success. And what does it mean? It means the this website is able to generate the files for you. And right now you should check your email. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to look at my Outlook, my Outlook, and uh, I will get right now an email. OK. It's coming. Must be. It must be on the way. Oh, here we go. So it says here, don't reply. And you can see where it came from. It says NRC. Anybody knows what is in our in in our can? This is called Natural Resources Canada. OK, and so here is a link. So this link here is simply your zip file. So if you click on this link, it downloads for you a zip file that that contains all the data that you have requested. So really what you have to do is so let's go to our project again. And you can do that. How long does it take? How long? Anybody can tell me how long does it take? It took me for five minutes. Huh? For you, it will be less. So you will have to do that twice because I'm asking you to download two data sets. OK, so here is another data set. So you do it twice and please get, re get ready with your two zip files. Every time you ask for data, it will get a, a zip file. So download a zip file for this one. Let's call it one. So this one, data set one. And this one is data set, data set two. Please download them and get ready. When I teach you more, you will progress more on this project. Not very difficult. I promise you this will be the easiest assignment for the entire year and it's 5% of your final mark. OK, now I'm done with today, so I'm just open the floor for questions. Questions. You guys are so quiet today. 
Typically, Kitan will ask a couple of questions or something. Maybe Luca, maybe Matthew, maybe Sana, Nick, Martin. Any question, guys? Any question? Okay, yeah, thank you so much. Our email. <laughs> Say it again, sorry? We are still waiting for our email. You got it. Okay, sir. So you guys uh, uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tahir. Have a good thank day. You, thank you.